Hey guys, the gig is up. I'm not the real Jesus. As a matter of fact, the fella's name wasn't even Jesus. He had a Hebrew name. There wasn't a letter J until a few hundred years ago. <laughs> With that being said, I have fooled the whole world into the biggest sham of all time. The name and identity of the real fella has been taken over by me. <laughs> there are thousands of paintings of Jesus and they don't even come close. Jesus was the creation of the Roman Catholic Church, which served to replace the real fella who probably looked more like Morgan Freeman. <laughs> but who cares? The truth doesn't matter, as long as you pay your tithes. <laughs> Hey, did you know that Pope Alexander VI commissioned Leonardo da Vinci to reinvent Jesus in the image of his own beloved son, Cesare Borgia? He felt that the Vatican needed a makeover because the real fella wasn't too appealing to the general public. So, voila, here I am, the modern version of the fake Jesus. <laughs> Got you again. You saw me. I actually came clean and told you that I wasn't the real Jesus. I also told you that I was created to make certain populations happy and comfortable. Well, I am glad to see that many of you are loyal and enjoy strong delusions and still want me as your savior. <laughs> wow! What idiots! Hi, I'm Marianne Phillip and I'm here to talk about whether Leonardo da Vinci was a homosexual pedophile. Because Every art historian or historian who says he was a homosexual also accuses him of being a pedophile of the worst sort. Uh, someone who would take an 11 year old boy into his home as his student and then use him sexually. Do your eyes. Maybe I just want to be yours. I want to be yours. I want to be yours. want to be yours. This is how I see. No man holds the power to judge me. And today we'll be taking a look at the life of Rodrigo de Borja y Doms, or Rodrigo Borgia, as he would become known in Italy and recognized internationally as Pope Alexander VI, leader of the Catholic Church. Even today, characterizations of Borgia range from conniving to evil, and some even call him the Devil Pope, son of the Duke of Ferrara. Cesare planned this marriage to aid in his own political conquests, but luckily for Lucrezia, it was her final marriage. Lucrezia and her brother Cesare faced many rumors while in the public eye, along with their father. Some accused Lucrezia of being incestuous with her brother and her father, a rumor possibly started by her first ex-husband Giovanni Sforza. There was also an additional child who began appearing in public with Lucrezia in 1501. A papal decree announced that he was an illegitimate child of Cesare and an unknown woman. Strangely, a second decree would come later, stating that the now three-year-old was actually Rodrigo's. Because of these papal decrees and the fact that the child was seen with Lucrezia, some believed the boy was a child of incest between Lucrezia and either her brother or her father. He would later be named Giovanni Borgia, and his mother would remain unknown. This salacious gathering was detailed by papal diarist Johann Burchard. It took place on October 31st, 1501, and involved a party with over 50 sex workers. The banquet was arranged by Cesare and took place in his chambers in the Vatican. After a large dinner, the courtesans were brought in to entertain guests and dance with them. The diary notes that the courtesans were initially dressed but eventually took their clothes off completely as the night went on. At one point, chestnuts were thrown about on the ground by the guests, and the sex workers were ordered to crawl on the floor to pick them up. The diary then implies that people began to have sex with the courtesans, as the entry ends on, finally prizes were announced for those who could perform the act most often with the courtesans. While there's no detail on whether the Borgias participated in this contest, Rodrigo, Cesare, and Lucrezia were all present at this banquet. I want to give all the praises and the honor to Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shah Bahashem, Recha Ha Quidash, 
and double honors to the elder apostles and even the elder bishops of Great Millstone. Honors and salute to you other brothers and elder, eld, eld, elders scattered abroad. Uh, I was going to say eldering <laughs> scattered abroad. Even you few sisters and uh, shalom to the, to the elect. So anyway, um, I want to dive back into this video um, after the um, video of Lil Nas X and his J. Christ thing and Christians are making an abundance of videos on the LGB community. I'm going to say that. And what they seen in this video, now all Christians are trying to stand firm uh, against the, the hypocrisy of society. But they will not stand firm against original Christianity. So now if that is all a lie and they see this as a lie, now we're exposing the fact, which we've been exposing, we're exposing the fact that this fake Jesus you put up is a lie. You'll be surprised the comments of what these Christians have to say. In fact, um, let me read one of these comments. I don't know where it is. I know I got the comment up. Let's see what one of the comments say. Okay, this is what one of these Christians said. Okay, they said, we do not worship any image. This is what they said. We don't worship any image. Now, this is the same thing we say when the black only Israelites come up and say, y'all worship the image. No, you don't worship the image. But that image is a depiction of what you believe the Messiah is. Now, we're not supposed to be liars. And if we understand that all of these depictions or what we believe the Messiah is, is false, then that means we've been lied to, right? If I go online to purchase me a, a 2020 gray Silverado, right? Nice colored interior and everything else. And I say, okay, let me go see it. And then I go see it. It's a 2005, it's red. And it's, and it's uh, basically, I was lied to. You sold me the money, right? You had me set, buy it on a pre, pre set, the pretense that this was this color, this age, this year, this everything. But then when I go to pick it up, it looks like something totally different. I'm going to be pissed off. So it's a total lie. Anyway, they say we pray and sing to the son of the living God. So why haven't you done that uh, when you had those images in the churches? That is the only reason why we got to put up the images we have now because of this madness, man. We wouldn't even have to show our people the true image of the most high if it wasn't for this. Right? God, Yeshua, Jesus is our savior. Now, do you really think Jesus being your savior will allow you to worship something like that? We pray when Jesus teaches in the Bible, dear father in heaven, See, this is all BS. This is all excuses. It was all good. Nobody never said anything like this, right? When we was following that white Jesus, we do not worship any image. Why didn't anybody tell the so-called blacks, Latinos, Native Americans, that you're not supposed to worship that image? You had us worship it. And they put that image up for a reason. The reason why they put that image up because they knew the truth about the original images. So why did you do it? This goes to show you that plantation white supremacist Christianity, white supremacy Christianity is a part, a big part of the destruction psychologically of our people, period. Now I want to get a scripture real quick and then I'm going to go look up some words. Right, Luke 8 and 17, okay, it says, I like reading this. For nothing is in secret or hidden that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. Right, so we see Proverbs 26 and 26. It says, um, maybe I'll get 25. Go to Proverbs 26 and 25. It says, when he speaketh fair, believe him not. For there are seven abominations in his heart whose hatred is covered by deceit, right? And wickedness shall be, sh be shewed before the whole congregation. 
right? So this is is being shown. Uh, now this is going in all the Israelites, but I'm just saying, uh, according to what we're speaking on, uh, his wickedness is being shown, and everybody is seeing now the lies and the deception, right? This is pure lies and deception. Now there's a thing called denialism, a practice of denying the existence of truth. This is going back to this lady comment. It says, despite something, despite proof or strong evidence that it is real, true, or valid. Right? Denying existence or truth of validity of um, yeah, validity of something despite proof or strong evidence that it is real. Do you know in the same channel, these different channels, these people are saying that the true image of, of the Messiah still looked like that uh, hundreds of years before the Renaissance. This is why they would never come up to us and try to debate us or even, we probably wouldn't even deal with it, but on that level. But through history, we can prove it. We pull out the Renaissance art and prove that. It's simple. Anyway, we see it also is something called cognitive dissonance. Psychological, a psychological conflict resulting from incongruous, incongruous beliefs or in incongruous. Let's go look that up. I just want to make sure I'm right. See what it says. Incongruous. Okay, incongruous. It means lacking congruity, such as uh, basically not uh, compatible, incompatible, disagreeing, right? not disagreeing right so we see it there um there's more on that but i just want to just hit the points there's a thing called art imitates life now and this was also a man uh i can't remember his name oscar something let me see if it pulls up art imitates life by oscar wilde wilde Wildy. Art imitates life. Art, imita art life imitates art. This is written in like the eighteen hundreds, right? Um, all the world, a uh, all the world's a stage, and we can merely, and we are merely actors. William Shakespeare. I never paint dreams or nightmares. I paint my own reality. These quotes and many more like them speak of how art such as paintings, play stories, music, art, express, and life. Display reality. And they got this back from the 1400s, right? Teaches a life lesson using all these forms of art to tell us a story, capturing our minds. You see that? This is what this was all about. Uh, whitewashing, iconoclasm, image destruction to bring in these, these images right it was to teach you a new reality a new lesson now i also said uh left a comment if i can remember this was beaten into us to worship that messiah we already knew not to worship anything like that and now it's so it, it's, it's so destructive that our own people will sit there and say well it don't matter anyway we love them anyway it, it doesn't matter but now if we switch roles and say Robert E. Lee was a black man and he did such great things, white people would have a problem with that. Right? If we say JFK was a black man and sat him in front of everybody and say, see, this was John F. Kennedy. He was a black man with an afro. You think they would have a problem with that? Probably so. I'm pretty sure they would. If we showed Babe Ruth you know, although some just because some people look white don't mean that they're not Israelites because it's, it's the spirit, it's the seed. Just saying, they're the only ones allowed to hate. They're the only ones allowed to white whitewash history. That is whitewashing history, by the way. They're the only ones that are allowed to be so deceptive. And then when we say this is hateful, this is an identity crisis. Like if I go get pulled over by the police and I tell him, and it shows my picture 
and my name says Bruce Leroy, and they find out I was lying, guess what? You'll be locked up for identity theft, right? Tell me I'm lying. You go to cash a check, and you have your face on there with somebody else's name, guess what's going to happen? You're going to be locked up for identity theft. And those, those aliases will haunt you and stick with you. Right? I just wanted to bring that out. Uh, let's get um, um, Jeremiah 10. Um, and let's say and 14. Let me see the 14. Every man is brutish in his knowledge. Every founder is confounded by the graven image for his molten image is falsehood and there is no breath in them. So this is a, another example that these Christians say we worship Jesus and this or that. Well, how are you worshiping the true Messiah? Well, you are worshiping that Jesus, but you're not worshiping the true Messiah. He said, have no other gods before me. So you mean to tell me if Balaam, right, or um, any of those deities of ancient Israel, we had an image of that up saying it is God. Do you think that would still be accepted by the Heavenly Father? And you say, well, we're not worshiping the image. We're, we're truly worshiping God. And, and, and this is what our people were doing. Right? That's exactly what our people were doing. It says, they are vanity and the work of, of errors in the time of their visitation, they shall perish. And this is what we're doing now. We're getting rid of it now, right? Exodus 20 and 1, 22. I'm the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thus saith the Lord, thou shalt have no other gods before me. Now, this person said, it doesn't matter. We don't worship the image. But you had them in our church. You had them in the churches that we followed. You have them in a the Roman Catholic church. What does that do to a child? six months old, right? And you take him to the church and you engraft that image in him as he get older. If Jesus, if the true Messiah, let me say that, beamed down on earth and you had an image of the white Messiah and a true image of the real Messiah, where do you think those children will go? Where do you think the majority of people will go? You think they're going to go into the image of the true Messiah? Or they're going to go to the Messiah that they've known to be the true Messiah. That's the art imitating life. They have made their own reality. Right? That's exactly what they did. You know? Like if I went to jail and I didn't see my son born, and then all of a sudden, you know, they send me pictures of him, and I say, okay, this is my son. This is what I'm connecting with. This is why we got eyes that are windows to the soul, to the spirit, and, it, and to your heart is where you tend to acknowledge things. They knew that iconoclasm would be the destruction of us because now we don't have anything to identify with, right? If we as great people, no, notice they kept Martin Luther King black, right? Give it time, Michael Jackson will be white. <laughs> anyway, that's why he painted him his damn self. They try to keep us from our Lord. That's what this is all about. The connection to our Lord. Because if we understand the true image, then we know that ain't the name. This is why no Israelite should be calling on Jesus the Christ, right? Okay, if I was in, and in, 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 like I said, and I had a son, and they showed me a picture, I said, yeah, this is my son. And then I get out of jail, and they go to, and I go to greet my son, and he's some goddamn Asian, Right? Or like a black ass Hamite. I'm going to be like, what the hell is going on here? This is not the perception that was given to me and that I took in to understand. This is, we, this is crucial. The truth is crucial. This is no different than these demons talking about it's okay to worship Santa Claus. We're in a society that says you ain't supposed to lie. But they let this lie flourish all these years. And then now all of a sudden we're telling you that this is not the truth. Now these Christians got all these words to say and say, it don't matter anyway. I just worship the image. 
I mean, I just worship God. I don't worship the image. You worship God. I do what he say. I worship him. What he said, thou shalt have no other gods before me. You think the most high, you, I think this was a woman. You think you will want your children worship, worship in the image of a black man and you look like a white man or, or a black woman and you look like a white woman? If they said, Ma, this is you, and if the black woman had afros, big full lips, big nose, and looked nothing like you, do you think any woman or any man on this planet would accept that? See, this is the delusion. That they should, what's the second Thessalonians? This is the delusion that they should believe a lie. Let me go there real quick. I was going to go into Revelation 1, but it's no need. I mean, Revelation 1 and 14 said his feet are like unto fine brass um, as they burned in the furnace. Fine brass is very dark, by the way. Um, second th oh, Is it First Thessalonians or Second Thessalonians? Let me see if I can find it real quick. I think it's Second Thessalonians 2. 2 and 3. Let no man deceive you by any means. You remember the scripture also say in Matthew 24, many will come in my name, saying I am Christ, say lo, go here, go there, and it says believe them not. Right? Um, Except there come a fallen away first, and the man of sin shall be revealed, the son of perdition. This image right here is another example of the son of perdition, of destruction. We look at our Lord and Savior as a bigger brother, as a family. And there's no way in anybody's family that they're going to see an image like outside of what their family look like and accept that, man. There is no way. Okay, verse 10, 9, even of him who's coming after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish. Because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, Yahweh shall give them a strong delusion that they should believe a lie, that they might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Our people love this image. And it's clear, this is why they'll complain about it. They never complain when this image was up, thriving in our communities on the school buses, or let me say MTA buses back in the day. Right, and everybody grandma household. Why do you think grandmas put them images up on the wall? If the image didn't mean nothing, why the hell did they put them up on the wall? Why did they put them in the church? Why did they hang them on the walls in the church? If it was only about worshiping the Lord, why the hell is the image there? Of all people to put up. Well, now we know. Your your Jesus Christ, he's a power he's a power bot. That's all I have on that, Shalom.